Hello, chemistry students. Today we will be performing our kinetic study of an iodine clock reaction experiment. In part A of this experiment, we will determine the rate law of the reaction using the method of initial concentrations. And then in part B, we will keep the reaction concentrations constant and change the temperature. This will allow us to use the Arrhenius equation to determine the activation energy of the reaction. Let's get started. In part A of this experiment, we're going to determine the rate law of our reaction, and in order to do that, we will need to change the initial concentrations of iodide and persulfate ion in three different trials. And we first need to record the temperature of our solutions at room temperature. Our solutions at room temperature are 20.4 degrees Celsius. We now need to prepare our test tubes for trial number one. We will first add 1.00 milliliters of 0 0.200 molar potassium iodide to test tube number one. We'll next add 1.00 milliliters of 0 0.200 molar potassium chloride solution to test tube number one. We'll next add 2.00 milliliters of 0 0.100 molar ammonium persulfate to test tube number two. We'll next add 1.00 milliliters of 0 0.005 molar sodium thiosulfate to test tube number one. We'll now add two drops of 1% starch indicator to test tube number one. We'll now start our reaction for trial number one by transferring the contents of test tube number two to test tube number one and quickly mixing. And as soon as we make that transfer, we'll start a timer and we'll stop our timer as soon as the solution turns blue. We'll now prepare our test tubes for trial number two. We'll first add 2.00 milliliters of 0 0.200 molar potassium iodide to test tube number one. We'll now add 2.00 milliliters of 0 0.100 molar ammonium persulfate to test tube number two. We'll next add 1.00 milliliters of 0 0.005 molar sodium thiosulfate to test tube number one. We'll now add two drops of 1% starch indicator to test tube number one. 
We'll now start our reaction for trial number two. We'll now prepare our test tubes for trial number three. We'll first add 2.00 milliliters of 0 0.200 molar potassium iodide to test tube number one. We'll next add 1.00 milliliters of 0 0.100 molar ammonium persulfate to test tube number two. We'll now add 1.00 milliliters of 0 0.100 molar ammonium sulfate to test tube number two. We'll now add 1.00 milliliters of 0 0.005 molar sodium thiosulfate to test tube number one. We'll now add two drops of 1% starch indicator to test tube number one. We'll now start our reaction for trial number three. You can now use the initial rates method to determine M and N, the order of the reaction, and then calculate the rate constant K. This concludes part A of this experiment. For part B of this experiment, we're going to determine the activation energy, so therefore we will keep the reaction concentrations constant, but we will vary the temperature. For part B, trial number one, our trial at room temperature, please refer back to trial number two of part A. Trial number two of part A and trial number one of part B are the exact same procedure. Therefore, we will use the results from trial number two of part A as our results for trial number one of part B. The initial temperature for our reactants of trial number two is 30.1 degrees Celsius. We'll now start our reaction for part B, trial number two.
The initial temperature for trial number three of part B is 10.3 degrees Celsius. We'll now start trial three of part B. The initial temperature of the reactants for trial four of part B is 0, 0.0 degrees Celsius. We'll now start trial four of part B.
You can now use the Arrhenius equation and the results of our trials from part B of this experiment to determine the activation energy. This concludes the wet lab portion of this experiment. Okay, students, you can now use our results from part A of this experiment to determine the order of the reaction and our rate constant K. You can then use the Arrhenius equation and our results from part B of the experiment to determine the activation energy. Remember that we're using our results from trial two of part A of this experiment as our results for trial one of part B of this experiment at room temperature. This concludes our kinetic study of an iodine clock reaction experiment. Thank you for joining me for this laboratory.